Hi, my name's Carl Watson, and welcome to this series of videos I'm doing on weekend breaks within the UK. This weekend, I'm heading up to Manchester and the Peak District. I'm gonna be traveling up there with James, but we're gonna kinda of like take a back seat for this weekend because we're meeting up with our friends Nick and Amy who run What The Foe Travel Podcast. Where do you guys live? Now. Posh, posh Wanker Palace over here. Now, they're originally from Essex, but they moved up to Manchester like 18 months ago or something, and they've completely fallen in love with the city, so they've got this whole weekend planned out for us. On the second day, they're gonna take us up to the Peak District, but on the first day, they've got this whole like tour of Manchester that they're gonna take us up. When we go traveling, so many times our couch surfing host would take us around the city, they'd tell us all these details about where they live, and we were really embarrassed, because we were like, I don't know, we're originally from Essex, and we were thinking, we don't know any facts. So yeah, that's why when we moved to Manchester, and when people like you come down, we think we need to know some facts to kind of educate people on. Where we are. Alright, so we just arrived at Nick and Amy's place in Manchester. Now if you know Nick and Amy, they kinda of like do budget backpack and travel like we do. They're now in a place so posh that we got told off for filming outside. Can't film the building, so Nick, I'm what very the fuck has happened here? <laughs> I'm very surprised. I didn't know the rule. He said no professional filming here, and we thought we can't. Professional. <laughs> <laughs> when we tell people here who are from Manchester, we tell them what the rent is, they think that's crazy. Why would you ever pay that? But to be honest, where we're from in the south of England, especially London, like near where Carl lives, right. This is like really, really good value compared. So we've got our South of England heads on. We think it's great value. We've got gym, pool, lots of things included in our rent. So we think it's a good deal. But I think the best thing about it is the floor to ceiling windows. You've got great views. You can see Manchester Airport one way. You can see the city centre the other. And you can see the Peak District where we're going walking tomorrow. We want to show you Manchester, the city centre. In our opinion, we like to think, well, we like to think we've been to a lot of places. In our opinion, it's our favourite city in the world, can we say that? It's our favourite place we've ever lived, for sure. I must be your own, Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> we think it's a great place, and I, I feel the pressure to show you guys how great Manchester is as well. <laughs> Both James and I have been to Manchester quite a few times before. Um, <laughs> One of the people. I just shoot your fury straight but, down. No, 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 but like I've just mainly been here for gigs and stuff. But one of the times we were here previously was like on a press trip, which is like the worst trip I've ever done in my life. So your bar is very low, mate. You can't do any worse than that. The reason why Manchester is the fastest growing city in Europe. Lots of new jobs here, lots of opportunity, lots of development. The first place we're going to go to perfectly shows what's going on. We're going to Media City, so that's just out of the city centre in a place called Salford. Big media companies like BBC, ITV have moved up from London. They're still in London, but they've moved a lot of their operations up to the north of England, providing a lot of jobs for people, bringing you know, high paid professionals to this part of the country. This is where a lot of their, or most of BBC Sport is based, so BBC Radio 5 Live. Match of the Day is filmed here in Salford. Coronation Street. Yeah, cool, yeah. <laughs> Coronation, that has nothing to do with sport. This is just like really modern living, so you've got the BBC ITV here, and like on Sundays I have yoga classes behind me. They've got like Blue Peter Gardens here, and there's like some garden sheds that have been turned into a bar. It's really like cool place, I think. Nice. So Salford, like if you ever talk to anybody that's a true Mancunian, they always say that Salford's quite a rough city, but I haven't seen that side of Salford at all. I see it as the same thing. Oh, Manchester right. United. Awesome. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> There's nice people in Manchester. That's why I love living here. Go, Nick. 
I've got a Scotch egg, which uh, is a great example of the fine cuisine that comes from our brothers and sisters north of the border in Scotland. It's really healthy. That's, that's considered to be a substantial meal during the <laughs> I think some of the meal. It looks like meal. a dessert. Oh, that looks good. And as soon as egg. the camera comes on, Nick turns really posh. like, this is a Scotch yeah. egg. <laughs> How do I normally talk then? <laughs> Gangster. Like fucking right in the street. <laughs> <laughs> Attempting to undermine all of this sort of progressive stuff, just put some really old fashioned music on, like Manchester City on the Rise. <laughs> Manchester City on the Rise. So. Now with full electricity. <laughs> <laughs> Gee whiz, mister. Gee whiz. <laughs> Don't worry, little Timmy, you won't have to work in the factories anymore. <laughs> Thanks to new child labor laws. <laughs> All right, so we're gonna eat at the Federal, but like all good food places in big cities, there's a queue, so we've got takeaway. Just sitting by a sandpit. I'm not gonna film too much of that because there's kids. Um, I've got a steak sandwich, thanks, James. Come for Nick. I've gone for a salmon bagel. And can I correct you? I noticed that you said sandpit, but you were supposed to say beach. Beach. It's actually beach, get it right. I mean, there's no water, <laughs> so. <laughs> yeah. Very nice. So we're eating lunch, then we go to a game place, is that right? We do, yeah, there's an electric game box place, like an arcade slash virtual reality thing. Uh, nice. We're going to take you along the canals of Manchester, show you some okay. sights, show you some TV and film uh, movie locations. Oh, okay. I like films. Which would be good, and a bit of history as well. We're now at the Science and Industry Museum in Manchester, where it all began in the late 18th century, this is where the industrial revolution began. All this modern industrial technology, which has shaped the world to be what it is now, started here. And what it was here mainly was textiles, it was a cotton industry. This whole area of the country is a really good spot for growing cotton because it's not because it rains all the time. Manchester is not the wettest city in the UK. We spoke about this yesterday. The wettest city in the UK is. Cardiff. Cardiff. <laughs> but the reason why the conditions here are so good for textiles, growing cotton, is because it's just all year round the rain is reliable. So that's why this was a hub for textiles, and like I said, the Industrial Revolution was born here and changed the whole world. Oh, really? In terms of like film sets and stuff, they actually use Manchester as a cheaper alternative to New York. I think like The Crown was shot when it, they were in New York, it was actually shot in Manchester and, and loads of other things like Captain America, all of those, if it's in New York, it's actually Manchester. If you watch Peaky Blinders, you'll know that it's set in Birmingham, but a lot of it's shot in Manchester because it's a similar vibe with all the factory buildings and stuff like that. Do you want my uh, impression of Arthur? Oh, oh yeah. For Peaky Blinders? <laughs> By order of the Peaky fucking Blinders. <laughs> that, like, you two don't watch it, but it's actually quite accurate. By order of the Peaky Blinders. Oh. I've done better before, but... <laughs> no, that was good. So the, the famous Beetham Tower, it's always been a really uh, iconic part of the Manchester skyline. It's got quite a strange shape, as it, it's got an overhang. But the guy, the architect who designed it, he didn't accept any payment for, for his design. He said, no, all I want is the top two floors to live in. And they said, okay, fine. He lived there for a while, and then later sold it for over three million pounds. So that is way more than what his fee would have been in the first place. Nice. And also... Um, oh, no, I'm telling you, we're going to move down on facts here, okay? <laughs> Next. Yeah, let's move up. This is my fact. So the Beetham Tower was the tallest building in the UK outside of London. Okay. But... Oh, you stole my fact. <laughs> no, oh, you finished it. I was doing the first half. Oh, you were doing a setup for me? Yeah, yeah. Oh, right, until all the really posh people over there, posh wankers, I think they're called. <laughs> where, do you, where do you guys live? <laughs> Now. Posh, posh Wanker Palace over here. <laughs> now that's the tallest one, is it? Which one was it? The North Building? South, 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 South Tower. Tower. Yeah, tallest outside of London.
walking along the canal, I really like seeing these old buildings. Most of them are empty now, these big factories. These places, yeah, used to be rammed. And I remember my, my granddad, he didn't grow up here, he grew up in Sheffield, but he was telling me a story. His first ever job when he was probably 15, 14 or 15, coming out of school, was in a factory like this. And they'd work six days a week. They'd have Sunday off and a year, you had one week holiday in the whole year and that wasn't paid. But yeah, these buildings are all empty now and a lot of them are now being converted into flats, apartments in Manchester. And because there's lots of empty warehouses around this area, a big like rave party scene developed, venues, yeah, we're using these empty factories for raves, which, does James know anything about that? Yeah, warehouse project. Yeah, exactly. Have you ever been there? Uh, no, uh, <laughs> well, the Hacienda nightclub was closed and it's now apartments called the Hacienda Apartment Block. <laughs> Disgraceful. We learn, yeah. we learn why that closed down. The business failed. Like it helped kickstart the like, house and rave culture in Manchester. But the reason why it closed down because it didn't make any money. Because all the customers, no one bought drinks because <laughs> everyone was on drugs. So you can see we're in the. LGBTQ plus part of Manchester, otherwise known as Gay Village. We learned uh, a few weeks ago that Manchester has actually always been very uh, like accommodating, very friendly to the gay community, partly because we were told when Margaret Thatcher was in charge, the Prime Minister here in the UK, their government was against uh, equal rights for gay people. So anything the south of England doing, if the north can piss them off, that's what they'll do. So the, the local council here were always quite open to the gay community. And we learned here, this is quite a famous place, the new union pub, when being gay was illegal. The police used to regularly raid that place. What is interesting is down this part of the canal is where a lot of female prostitutes used to curb crawl, used to be on the streets. <laughs> and the men inside the pub came up with a very clever solution. They said, girls, rather than you be, you know, rather than you be outside all night in the cold, come into our gay bar with us. If we get raided, men and women couple up. Wow. And they look like a heterosexual couple. Yeah. This particular pub has 22 bees all over it and um, some people might know some big news from Manchester in 2017 at the Manchester Arena. We had an Ariana Grande uh, like concert here and there was a big bomb that went off. But yeah, the 22 bees on this pub represent the 22 people who lost their lives in it. So we're in Sackville Gardens at the moment and it's quite famous for having an Alan Turing um, statue by it. He wasn't from Manchester but he came here for university and studied kind of like computer science and he's one of the most intelligent guys in our history I'd say. He built the first computer. It was a big deal because he actually cracked the Nazi Enigma code in World War II uh, they made a film about it and Benedict Cumberbatch <laughs> played him. Yeah, the imitation game was the film. Uh, so he basically he helped to end World War II a lot sooner. And they predicted that he saved like, it was like 10 to 14 million lives as a result of that. But, but it was a really sad ending to yeah, his life. Yeah, he was gay himself. When the police found out that he was, they gave him two options. You either, because it was illegal at the time, you're either put in prison for the rest of your life or chemical castration. He went with the latter one, which is a big shame because like, yeah, pumped all these like hormones in his body, like oestrogen, and basically it shut down his brain and yeah. He couldn't, he couldn't concentrate on his work. He felt, felt very depressed. And in the end, he actually killed himself by injecting cyanide, by injecting poison into an apple. Well, they think it was him that did it, that put it into the apple. They're not completely sure. He took a bite of the apple died, he was found next to an apple with a bite taken out of it. Now bearing in mind he was in computers and technology, do either of you two have an iPhone on you? Oh I see. Look yeah. at the back of it. Look at the back of your iPhone. Yeah I know, there's, I know the <laughs> apple symbol. <Yeah. laughs> now people have asked apple before like is this true is this where like the origin of it and like sadly it's not actually true that's not why they're using it's that as a, their logo it's just a coincidence just the, the founders were like no i just quite like the look of an apple with a bite out of it which is really sad they should go with the alan turing one with it change the history yeah. Yeah.
So we've come to Electric Game Box, which is basically like this 3D, almost virtual reality kind of games room. And the game we're playing is basically like Pac-Man, but instead of using like a joystick, you have these sensors on a cap on your head, and you basically have to like collect coins and avoid the ghosts, not any edges and stuff like that. And it's a lot harder than it looks. Fortunately, Nick and Amy have played before, so they kind of made up for uh, our ability. Yeah. And we got the highest score. So we've got the top score. We have. Yeah. Oh, that was all me. Number one. Oh, Viet Shack. This is our favourite restaurant in Manchester. It's in Ancoats, just north of the city. Like you know, what you're gonna get. It's simple, but it's delicious. Great value, and it's a very like kind of Instagrammable place. If that makes it sound terrible. Yeah, I, I mean, I mean that in a good. Okay. okay cut that part. But no, Viet Shack. It's like uh, Vietnamese street food with a modern twist. It's delicious. We love it. No <laughs> question. Nah, it's not too bad today. Well, we've done it. After a busy day of exploring Manchester, we're now heading out to the Peak District, and it's about a 50 minute train ride to the village of Bamford. All right, so we just arrived in Bamford, up in the Peak District. We've gone past the really popular spot for Mam Tor, the most famous or popular hike in Peak District, because Nick's got something else planned for us. So, Nick, where the hell are we? What are we doing? Well, yeah, all the, uh, the train we were on was full of walkers and hikers, and they all got off. So these guys are thinking, why are we not getting off? That's because those guys have no idea of the secret cool spot that we're taking you to. <laughs> Which no one's probably ever been to. <laughs> <laughs> so this is... our own secret little walk, though. This is our, fa yeah, our favourite walk. Not anymore. <laughs> it won't be anymore, but for good reason. Like, this is our favourite walk that we've done in this part of the country. But wait for like... Is a mill. Right. That's it. It used to Done. be. Okay. Great <laughs> <Right> detail. <laughs> Do you know what the mill made? What it did? Some sort of produce. <laughs> Some sort of produce. I don't know. Like what would it be? The village and the children, the residents here, built this clay sculpture That's to mark the start of the trail. That's really interesting. Did you know, James, that from 1782, a water-powered corn mill, it's a corn mill, I was close, was built here by a local farmer and miller, Christopher Kirk. And this is what the sculpture represents. See? Exactly. <laughs> like this water is so still up there, it just looks like a perfect mirror. It does look really beautiful. It's like an infinity pool. <laughs> yeah. That's where we're going, is it? That's it, that is the edge, Bamford edge. <laughs> we took um, some Brazilian friends on this walk. Our Brazilian friend, Gustavo, he was up the top looking at his views and he said, if I took a picture like right now and showed any of my friends where we are, they would never believe this is England. He said, it's so beautiful because unfortunately, most tourists, when they think of England, all they know is London and, yeah. and a city. And a lot of people actually get surprised that we have green, but, but we have like, loads of it. Like look behind you, Nick. Green! <laughs> we have so much green, we, and we have a lot of beautiful green. Oh, now you're going to ask me facts. I've got it. Right. So you, you wanted to be on it? I do know that in the middle is a fish farm. <laughs> okay. Don't ask me what they fish. I'm it's guessing tough. it's not salmon. Fish, probably. Is it tuna? Is I that in I would I wouldn't imagine there's sheep or cows. Bower. <laughs> Lady Bower Reservoir. I believe there's a plaque up here which says like where this drinking water goes to. So the water here goes to homes and businesses throughout East Midlands and some of it goes to Sheffield as well. Like this? A mystery route through the forest. I know. The compass goes around, so... See we're heading to up there, it's not too far. There's a beautiful little forest down to be walking through. So uh, Amy's sort of saying this is the Lord of the Rings bit. I mean, I mean, there's plenty of forests that go through in the series, so yeah, like I'll give you that. Enchanted. I think it looks good. Oh, it's a lovely forest. 
So Amy very shortly is going to give us her rendition of Lord of the Rings. So I've watched Lord of the Rings. Face the camera, Nick. Go on. Probably like <laughs> once. <laughs> <laughs> I probably watched it once when I was like six. I don't even know when it came out. But this is a sum up of the six hour film. Oh God. We're going on an adventure. That's it. <laughs> Have you watched the same go, film? And then they go, oh no, I've never been this far from home before. <laughs> oh my God. And then they do like one step and they're like, Oh my god, I'm so far from home. Let's go get a ring. <laughs> you don't need uh, to watch the film now. <laughs> six hours later, they find the ring, do they? <laughs> <laughs> they find the ring. <laughs> and then put it somewhere. And then the ten end. years later, Carl Watson talks about it on every single video. <laughs> yes! <laughs> <laughs> that is a perfect summary of the film. Okay, so one, I didn't bring it up. <laughs> they brought it up. Um, so many things are wrong, I don't even know where to begin. So many things wrong. <laughs> when you're actually doing the walk, it's not that bad, is it? Yeah, well, that's a nice stroll. Gorgeous views already, though. How oh, yeah. does it rate with your other walks? Did we win? It's not a competition. It is a competition. I don't know, I think you lost because of that Lord of the Rings rendition. Oh. <laughs> Alright, this is Nick's, um, Nick's secret spot. There's actually... There's like, all the edges there. There's actually not as many people here as I thought there would be. So, it's okay, it's not secret. But yeah, the views like this, it looks amazing. You can see almost all around 360, almost. Wow, I see you usually see 180. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm being cynical. This is actually a really beautiful spot. Thanks for bringing us here, Nick. It's awesome. This is a really, really cool view. Really, really cool. This is a great spot, mate. Yeah, really nice, isn't it? Really good. So we finished up our walk by going for a pint in a country pub and yeah, it was just a lovely, lovely day out in the Peak District. This is a train to Manchester. <laughs> it was so great seeing Nick and Amy again and they put so much effort in to putting that weekend together for us. Yes! <laughs> 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 that is a perfect summary of the film. I've got to say though, in all my travels, you know, I've had severe food poisoning, I dislocate my shoulder cliff jumping, I dislocate my shoulder skydiving, I uh, once broke my rib and ruptured my kidney, which resulted in me spending nine nights in hospital. But that Lord of the Rings reenactment was probably the most painful thing I've ever experienced. The eagles would have got shot down, killed by the fell beasts, and also the eagles would have kept the ring for themselves. They wouldn't. <laughs> now, it was so great seeing Nick and Amy again, and hopefully next summer we'll get to do the Eastern European road trip we had planned for the previous summer. So uh, we'll see what happens, but hopefully we can make that trip happen because it should be incredible. But that's the last one of these UK weekend break videos I'm gonna do for now because tomorrow I'm flying off to Europe and I don't even wanna get excited about it. Like I don't wanna believe it's true that it's actually happening, you know? I think I'll celebrate once I've landed and I'm actually in the country, but yeah. Got some big adventures coming up, loads to look forward to. So make sure you like, subscribe, notifications, all that stuff as always. And thanks as always for watching. I'll see you again very soon.